Okay, guys, we're going to wait again. We're sorry for the mix-up. Uh, just had a little problem with uh, our box cast cutting in and out. So we've gone back to Facebook Live. We're going to give a few minutes for everybody to check in here and see if I can see who's signing in with us. I can say hello since I got my phone back here. Uh, we don't want to leave anybody out. Let you hear there. Got four. Okie dokie. All right, we're going to give just a minute or two, guys, because we didn't realize we don't know what we lost or where we got cut out at. So if you'll bear with me, we're going to take just a minute to kind of recap, okay? While recapping, as always, you can, you know, if we pray for you, please let us know. We go at the end, we look it over, we pray, we rejoice for good things. So please share that with us. I did mention early that our CCHS volleyball girls team, region champs, amazing accomplishment, love those girls, and I know they're going to go far, so you encourage them every chance you get. Uh, Sunday school this week, 5 p.m. tomorrow on Facebook, 5.15 on the YouTube channel. The children and students, uh, we had technical problems, uh, volume issues. We'll get those on next week, so bear with us. Please be patient with us. But adults is tomorrow at 5 and 5.15 on Facebook and YouTube. Sunday worship, 10 o'clock online right here on Facebook Live and all of our other viewing options. And then I did mention, too, that we have uh, coming in next week is our uh, 2020 The Spirit of God Within You, Thomas Nelson Devotion. Fourth year I've been able to be a part of this wonderful project. I'm humbled beyond measure that God will let me do that. Many of you have been so kind to get them in the past. I want to really encourage you to get them this year because 100% goes to Hearts Cancer Assistance Program. Robbie Mobley and Cindy Robinson and Lacey up there, they just do a tremendous job serving our community needs that many of us have never know about. And cancer is something that touches every family. So they are helping folks with getting the treatments, getting the, you know assistance for food, medication, and if they're having a difficulty with utilities and things like that, that's what that program helps. So when you buy books this year, you're helping them assist folks in our county, right here in Cleveland County, that need uh, help with uh, cancer, okay? So do remember that. You can pre-order books by just sending us a message here on Facebook. You can uh, email us. You can call our office. It doesn't matter. We'll be glad to hold those for you when they come in, okay? Very important. And also I mentioned too, uh, last night, you probably watched the presidential debate, certainly burdened my heart. Hope it burdens your heart for America, regardless of which side you're on, it doesn't matter. I I'm for Jesus. You know why I'm for Jesus? Because Jesus is for me and he's for all of his children and he's for us. He has set his face toward us and we need to set our heart toward his. So do pray much for our nation Oh my, we really need to call on God through this thing, okay? And then I wanted to go back and just recap a little bit 2020, where we've been. I told you, if you saw the earlier part, which I don't, uh, we're going to probably use this one as the one that stays up because the other one, we're not sure when it cut out on us. But um, um, it's very important that as you walk with God, that you take a glance at the past, you set goals for the present, and you have a gaze toward the future. Very important. So we're going to do that real quick. Now, I know most of us don't want to revisit anything behind us in 2020, but regardless of what's happening around us, God's working this purpose through us. I really believe that. We started this year with a great momentum coming out of 2019. God was working tremendously. Great momentum, great worship, great liberty to preach, great spirit in the worship services. God was doing great things. And uh, in March, we were faced with the, uh, you know, the fact that we had to shut down. Uh, not just the church, the country. Yeah, there was so much going on around us. And we had March 15th was our last service before the initial shutdown. And from March 22nd to May 17th, we were nine weeks online only. Uh, then we were able to return to in-person worship, even though it's been different from May 24th to like August uh, the 2nd. We had 11 weeks of two services, social distancing spread out. August 9th and 16th, we had to close for two weeks because that's what we were told we had to do uh, because of a positive case. Um, August 23rd through th the August 23rd through September 20th, we were able to get back together for five weeks and two services. 
And then this past week, we had to stop again for a positive COVID case for last week and this week. Now, that's 13 weeks. That's a whole quarter that we have had to miss in-person worship, and we're only to October. Folks, I tell you, if you'd ever told me that was going to happen in the days of my ministry, I thought there's no way. But it has. And I told them earlier that if I write, write another book, I'm going to call it 13 Weeks in 2020 because this has been some kind of experience. And these 13 weeks have been painful, but they've taught me, and I'm sure it taught us all a lot. But I really want to share my heart with you tonight because, you know, God's given me the wonderful privilege to be your pastor. I count it a joy in my heart, not just to be your pastor, but to serve alongside you and to love you and feel the love that you give to us. But over this period of time, I, along with uh, many of the leaders in HBC leadership, we've worked diligently to abide by all the health standards, all the sanitation guidelines, and all the safety protocols. We've been very diligent to get the very latest news that we have, latest update data, whatever you want to call it, and make decisions each time based on what we had in front of us. Well, when the pandemic began, we were told nationwide to expect upwards of 2.2 million deaths if there was no shutdown. It wasn't hard to realize at that time that we did need to close our worship services for a period of time because our schools closed, many of our businesses closed, all retail, unless it was deemed an essential business. And we know those were very few and far between, our grocery stores, gas stations, auto parts, you know, hardware, you know, our fire, EMS, police, uh, many of those things uh, have to continue in our hospitals, of course, that were experiencing tremendous difficulty, but everybody else had to shut down. So as time has gone forward, we've continued to honor the information that's been given to us by our leaders, both our state leaders and our national leaders. We've tried to be good good Christian citizens as Romans chapter 13 teaches us to do and uh, we're going to continue to do that okay but you know that's a small word but it means the door is fixing to swing here's the but this week God really brought some things to light in my heart as I spent time saying God where do we go from here as your pastor I do believe that I am responsible for watching out for you and that does include your physical health, 100%. If you have physical health that's in danger, I want to make sure that we do everything we can to protect you against anything that might harm you. But Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17, the Lord took me there yesterday, I believe it was, and again this morning, and reminded me that as a shepherd that I am responsible to watch for your souls. You see, your, your soul is far more important because it lives on into eternity. And I have to come to realize that, yes, there are a lot of physical tolls that are being taken because of what's going on around us, but there are also spiritual and psychological tolls that are mounting on God's people that and sometimes are more dangerous than the physical dangers that we're facing very important I, I think it's important that you know that we see that our school leaders got schools open and we were able to get extracurricular things going again and things like that because then there's a great need for that i believe that with all of my heart but see this roller coaster stops and starts it begins to wear on your heart it wears on your mind and it does in an adverse way and because of that i believe it's time to recapture the wonder of what god's called us to do it's, re, it's time to recapture the wonder of what God's placed in our hearts for, because he's put us all together for such a time as this. We're a family of faith, and I'm so grateful to God to be a part of a family of faith. If anybody doesn't understand the importance of being a part of a local church family as a Christian, I can't imagine how you go through a time like this without that love and support and encouragement that the church family should bring. I believe it's time to stir up the good gift that God's placed in us and to refocus our hearts on the mission that God set before us. I was telling earlier about my, my friend John Lemon's greatest soul winner, the most humble, God-fearing, preaching pastor I know. And tonight I was watching his program. Uh, he's over in Georgia, on the other side of Bremen, Journey Fellowship Baptist Church. And 
As I was watching his program tonight, it really encouraged my heart because he's talking about the church at Thessalonica and what a testimony they had and how the church ought to have a real testimony of being an influence to the community and beyond. And that's very important. And I want to encourage you uh, to stay focused on that. Boy, the church at Thessalonica, they sounded forth the gospel. They were examples everywhere they went. And I believe that's what God wants us to do. So moving forward, let's take a step, uh, take a little peek at where we are right now, and then we're going to look real much ahead, what's ahead of us. This Sunday's October 4, first Sunday in October, Lord willing, we'll complete our final 14-day uh, shutdown and online-only service. Online-only service begin at 10 o'clock, and I encourage you to watch, to worship, and to hear what God has to say. I'm sure I'll have more information about all this stuff I'm about to tell you by Sunday. But beginning October 11th, that's the second Sunday, that's the backside of fall break. And I hope everybody's back in town and ready to go because we want to recapture the wonder and have what we're calling, it's a new day at HBC. This new day is going to be a day, I believe, where we say there really is no turning back. Because moving forward, we will return to in-person worship. We will keep our online options available, and I'll explain all of that, too. That's not going away. But we will have two services, 9 a.m. and 1030. Instead of 830 and 1030, we're going to try 9 a.m. and 1030 because I believe our guys have really, well, I tell you, just done a tremendous job of cleaning before, between, and after every service. They got these fancy spray nozzles and stuff and got this solution that dries real fast and they've got it down and they do a tremendous job and we really believe we can do that and not have so much lag time in between so we can move along. The first service at 9 a.m., I'm going to encourage you if you're high risk, if you're at an elevated risk of any physical problems or being more susceptible to catching uh, any, any sickness, I'd encourage you to come at 9 a.m. At 10.30, uh, we will have our second service, and I'll encourage you to. We'll always have, uh, we'll still have the, you know, the cleaning, the mask will be available if you need them. All that's still going to be there. Nursery will be available for both services, and Children's Church will be available at the 10.30 service. Now, we know that may be that we have to uh, open it up for both services. If we do, that's fine. But we're going to start like this on the 11th. Nursery will be staffed, not just open for you to use if you need it. It will be staffed for the 9 o'clock and 1030 service. And Children's Church will be available at the 1030 service. Now, Sunday School will continue online for just a little bit. And I'll tell you why. I need some time to work with Brother Robbie because we need to plan a meeting with all of our Sunday School teachers before we reboot Sunday School because there's a lot of things we'll have to do we didn't used to have to do. A lot of questions we'll have to answer and also make sure that we're doing what's in the best interest of our church family. Uh, worship music. I'm going to be working with Marty this week and next week to survey those in our music ministry uh, to see who is willing to work on strengthening our music ministry, maybe begin adding more people to the music service uh, at 9 o'clock and at 10.30 to be able to add more to that until the point that we're able to come back to the full choir. But we're going to work toward that. We need your help. So Marty and myself will be reaching out to those in the music ministry and seeing if you're available and if you're ready to get started again, okay? Uh, children's ministry, I'm going to be working with leaders there also to plan a return to our Wednesday nights for for children to plan a return and plan for when we do return to Sunday school for our children. So that's something you need to keep in mind. Student ministry, I'm going to be working with our leaders to plan a return to their Wednesday nights and also help them plan some ministry events because young people, you know, they're getting good some and I mean, you can go to the ball game, they're all over there and they're all over each other and everything else and you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's okay. I believe it's time for us to open that ministry back because these children, they need ministry. We'll be working with our stewardship team soon to be planning our 2021 budget and have a return to our business meetings in person so that we can keep you better updated 
uh, what's going on. The financial report went out today for the end of September. You should be getting it soon. It may be going out tomorrow, but it was completed today. Uh, but you should be getting it soon, and uh, that will keep you up to date on that end. See, when this COVID-19 pandemic began <clears throat> and it hit us, we didn't know which way to turn. I, there was nobody I could turn to to tell me, and now we realize that we're going to have to deal with it. It's going to be with us. I wish we didn't have to, but we do. Our schools are having to learn to deal with it. Our uh, athletic teams are having to learn to deal with it. All other extracurricular activities, uh, parades continue, reunions continue, shopping continues. Life must go on. And I do believe this, that church is essential. I really do. The church is essential to the way of life in this world today. And I believe that's very important. Now, I want you to understand this with what I'm saying. I am in no way, nor will I ever be, uh, making light of the seriousness of COVID-19. It's affected us all at some level. No way that I'm making light of that, nor will I ever. We're seven months into a battle that we will continue to have and we're going to continue through this thing. And here's what I promise to do. I continue to love you. I continue, I, can, I commit to continue to pray for you, to minister to those affected by it, because it's affecting us all at some level. And it will probably affect us more in the future because we don't know how it all shapes out. Now, moving forward, if you are symptomatic, if you're waiting on test results, if you have tested positive or you are at extreme risk, you should continue to worship online for the foreseeable future until you're better and until you have passed that time, okay? But if you're not symptomatic, if you're not waiting on test results, if you're not going through a time of quarantine because of a positive test or not at extreme risk, I would encourage you to make plans to be in worship at either 9 o'clock or 10.30 on October the 11th as we return to in-person worship. And I would encourage you to be there with your heart prepared. Whoop, right here. Heart prepared and your mind. Got them backwards. Heart and mind prepared. That's the only problem with doing this live. You can't go back and fix this stuff. But have your heart and mind prepared for worship because I believe that this is what God wants us to do. Now listen, if you've got any questions, any concerns, you know that I love you and I'm here for you and I want to help you. Always feel free to call me. Always feel free to email me. Always feel you can text me, whatever, because I care about you and I care about your future with Jesus. You know, David Platt said this one time, and whether you agree with David Platt or not, it doesn't matter. It's, it's really got some, it makes sense. He said, it's not the will of God that we would all just arrive safely at death, but that we would accomplish the purpose for which he has set for us while we are here. And I want you to know that's very important because I want you to be healthy. I want you to be uh, doing well, I, but I also want you to be spiritually healthy. I want you to be, you know, mentally healthy. And I don't know about you, but this thing has really worked on a lot of people that mean a lot to me. A lot of my friends, my family, and even me personally. And I bet it's affected you more than we probably realize. So let's move forward. Let's recapture the wonder. Let's get a plan to move forward. And look here. If I get sick, then somebody else will be preaching. And the ministry will continue. If Marty gets sick, then uh, then I'm going to be singing. So that'll get you all there, right? No, we'll have somebody else singing because it's not about us. And if you are sick, listen, we know you need to stay home. You need to get well. But I want you to know that we've got to move forward because there's too much at stake. It was okay to do this for a little while, but we can't do it forever. So this week, 10 a.m. online, Facebook Live and all of our viewing options. Next Wednesday night, I'll be right back here with you, updating you heading toward October 11th. On October 11th, it's a new day. We're going to recapture the wonder, and we're going to go forward for Jesus. And if we have other positive cases, we will not be shutting down. 
We will continue moving forward. And we will continue doing the work God's called us to do. Doesn't mean we don't care. It means we do care. We care about everything. So I just want you to know tonight that I love you. And there ain't a thing you can do about it. And I hope you love me. And I hope there's nothing I can do about it. But just know your love. Know you're being prayed for. You got any questions or whatever, please feel free to reach out to me because I would be more than happy to help you. And maybe you can help me and we can help each other through this thing because God's got a great plan for us all. God bless. Have a great Wednesday night. Look forward to talking to you again soon.